Certainly then, whatever follows these words, specifically preach the word in season and out of season, is not to be taken lightly. In fact, St. Theophon the Recluse, in his commentary on this passage, has the following to say. This, and he means preaching, this is the main work of the shepherd, which having been fulfilled will justify him, and if it is not fulfilled will condemn him at the last judgment. No other virtue will save him if he proves faulty in this respect. End quote. So much for St. Paul, then, on the singular importance of the exegetical and homiletical tasks. Let us turn to our more recent figure, uh, one who factors prominently in the history of our own seminary, Archbishop Averki. The memory of Archbishop of Virki, the much beloved former abbot of Holy Trinity Monastery, and in a sense my predecessor as he used to teach scripture here in the seminary, uh, lectured on the New Testament for a number of years. His memory is cherished uh, <clears throat> to this day here in Jordanville. His personal dedication to and efforts for training up practitioners in the art of reading scripture are evidence among other places, in the three volumes of his published New Testament lectures, which, by the way, are on sale in the back. Um, I was not paid by Nicholas to say that. Uh, and a number of his other works. Relevant, though, to our concern today, I want to draw some reflections from his guide to homiletics. Having addressed the nature of church preaching in the initial section of his work, the Archbishop dedicates the second section of the book to a discussion of different types of sermons that might be preached in the church. He notes that in most Orthodox preaching today, it takes the form either of an explanation of the current commemoration being celebrated, the feast or saint or so forth, or to a lesser extent, catechetical or topical homilies. But he points out that in the early church, the most venerable and ancient fathers dedicated the majority of their homiletic efforts to the expository preaching, working through entire books of scripture, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, so on and so forth. Let me read a selection from his reflection. This is Archbishop Averki on this theme. He says, the ancient fathers, the great preachers of the church, considered their first task to be a thorough explanation of the sacred books. For these books, written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, contained as fully as possible everything that people need to know about God and man, theology, and about the laws of grace-filled life and the conditions of our salvation, morality. They are given to us in order that we may nourish our souls with the truths contained in them, resolve all our doubts and perplexities, and direct our will to attain spiritual perfection and eternal salvation. <laughs> 